E hoje o Vida é um cast super especial com a doutora Lara Paiva, que é diretora de Ensino e Inovação. Ela vai entrevistar um craque. Ele é conhecido como Dr. GPT. Olha só, Dr. Harvey Castro, super especial. E vai falar um pouco sobre essa revolução tecnológica na saúde. Então, doutora Lara, é com você! Olá, sejam muito bem-vindos ao Vida on Cash. Mais um episódio e agora com um convidado internacional. É com enorme entusiasmo que damos início a um momento muito especial aqui no Apivida. Hoje teremos a honra de compartilhar com vocês conhecimento sobre IA aplicada à saúde. E o nosso convidado se chama Dr. Harvey Castro, que é médico emergencista, Chief Medical AI Officer at Help and I, e autor do best-seller ChatGPT in Healthcare. E ainda, ele atua como conselheiro do Ministério de Saúde da Singapura. E ele tem sido uma voz global sobre como a IA generativa está transformando a forma como cuidamos das pessoas. Não apenas com eficiência e tecnologia, mas com uma visão de futuro e foco no ser humano. Hoje, ele vai mostrar com exemplos práticos as tendências que já estão mudando o setor como um todo. Então, preparem-se para um bate-papo descontraído, divertido e leve sobre o tema. So, Dr. Castro, welcome to our videocast. It's a pleasure for us. We have some questions to, to you. And the first one is, Dr. Castro, when and why did you realize the artificial intelligence would not just be a trend, but a game changer in healthcare? And I just lucked out. ChatGPT had just been released that day and I was on the computer and it popped up and I started typing and asking the questions. And within five minutes, I said, oh my gosh, this is going to change healthcare. And I wrote the first book on how to use ChatGPT in healthcare. And three weeks later, it was out there. Immediately when I saw it, I, my life flashed. I was like, wow, if I was a medical student, when I was a resident, when I was um, I had my own hospital systems when I was, a, I, I had my own building, marketing, hospital, ERs, urgent cares. I grew the company to 400 and I thought, oh my God, if I had had this, I would have killed it. And that was when I thought, man, this is going to change healthcare. And, and I'm glad I wrote that book because from that book, it got me on world stages. And from those world stages, got me to be advisors for different countries and different organizations. So it really has taken off for me. And for those who still think AR as something distant from clinical reality, could you give us some example of its impact on healthcare workflow? Well, some of the simple stuff that we're already seeing is how AI can transcribe. You see, if I have a computer that is over here and I'm typing and I'm looking over there, I'm not looking at you. So right off the bat, a lot of hospital systems are using AI to convert the transcription to the EMR. And now I can focus my eyes on you and I can catch, you know, that our patients sometimes don't tell us the truth and we have to be looking at them and listening to them really carefully to know. And so that's one example. The second, the predictive analytics. Oh my gosh, I love it. Being able to catch diseases and diagnose them years before to give the patient a chance. For example, um, my voice can catch Parkinson's disease years before it's diagnosed, years. And so now I'm able to have time with the family and explain the disease and how to prepare for the disease and hopefully I can slow it down. So those are just quick examples of how I'm seeing it used today. Yeah, thank you. So there is a common fear among physicians and patients. I think you just talked, but will AI replace humans? What is your opinion about that? Mm, that's a real hot topic. Yeah. I don't think in our lifetime it's going to replace us. Here's why. At the end of the day, the AI is going to make mistakes. And in healthcare, if it makes one mistake, that's one mistake too many. I truly believe that it's the commonality. The other thing is, you as a person, people listening to this, do you want a robot or do you want a human? I really think in our generation, we want both. But we want the uh, human, the expert, the doctor to really drive it. And on the empathy, on the human touch, on that conversation, do you want the robot saying that you have cancer or do you want the human that's going to be compassionate? And so I think it's going to be both. The AI is going to teach me what words to use, what to say and how to say it. Maybe I'm a little rough, but the AI is helping me. But I do want to say this. The children that are being born now, that are playing on their iPads or phone, I think when they are the leaders, when they're in charge, 
they're going to be things that I think they're going to say the AI is going to take over. And those things, we're going to let the AI, and, and I call it the great shift. AI is going to make us do different work. And because of that, people are going to feel like they're losing their job. But some things will be gone, but there'll be other things that are going to expand. Agree. Yeah. Thank you. And in your opinion, what human skill will never be replaced, uh, even with all the advancement in technology? Oh, that's a good one. I really think the human creativity won't be taken away. I know AI can think and they think it can be creative, but that human empathy, that that energy that we can feel that when I walk in a room and you walk in a room, there's that special energy that is there that you can feel, that you can palpate, that some people you see and it just makes you excited. I think that energy will not be replaced. I, I really have a hard time thinking that an AI robot can come in and have that energy and that effect. In my opinion, that won't go away. I totally agree. And uh, I think the last one, because we have already talked about uh, another subject, to conclude, uh, what is your personal dream of the future of healthcare with artificial intelligence? My dream personally is to improve the quality of life and the time of life. An example, I want us to really dial into our healthcare that the AI is able to analyze everything. Give you a quick example. There's monitors that can go in the toilet that can analyze over 5,000 metabolites of your urine. Being able to catch things early, maybe a C-reactive protein, and then you're like, I know that's not specific, but it's starting to go up. So what inflammation is going on in your life? Being able to speak on a video phone call, or I call you, and then the AI is listening. I know that sounds weird, but then says, hey, Harvey, we're noticing your sugars are going up, and we're noticing your heart now is going higher than normal. What's wrong? Being able to catch things early. Again, my talk, proactive medicine against reactive, and I, I really think that's the future. Oh, great, great. Thank you a lot. Uh, may I ask just one, because I'm thinking here, you are an advisor in Singapore, right? Healthcare advisor. In your opinion, which is the most different between uh, the healthcare system in Asia and here in the United States or South America? Uh, what do you feel like? Uh... Yeah, I, I really think in a weird way, I know this sounds really controversial, so sorry, but I, I really think because they have so much control, they can control the laws, the outcome, they can manipulate. I'll give you an example. Uh, la a couple of years ago, I was in Singapore and I was talking to the Ministry of Health and I said, hey, we need to do X. And they said, oh, I, but I said, you probably can't do it. He's like, no, 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 Harvey, we'll, we'll change the rules, we'll change the laws, and then we can do that. And I thought, oh my God, in the United States, that's not gonna happen. You know, there's so much political tension that that, and I thought, you know what? I, I like that if it's for humanity, if it's to help people, and they're doing it, I thought, man, that, that's in a huge advantage because they can take risk and they can do things and they can implement and they can do it quickly instead of the legislation and body and regulatory holding them back. And I thought, man, that's a huge advantage for them. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's quite challenging here for us. So thank you a lot for this moment. Uh, we appreciate, we are very happy with your participation here and hope you see you soon here in, in Apivida visiting our, our hospitals. Thank you a lot. I would love to. Thank you. Bye bye. E a vocês que estão nos assistindo, mais uma vez, muito obrigada por estar aqui com a gente no Vida on Cash. Maurício, é contigo agora. E aí, vocês gostaram? Muito obrigado, doutora Lara Paiva, doutor Harvey Castro. Foi um papo sensacional e espero que você também tenha gostado. Então aproveita, ativa o sininho, segue a gente e não perca os próximos episódios, tá bom? Tchau, tchau. Música